So since Comet is a celestial object, bypassing the Earth only every 100 years, by the end of the summer it is coming back and once again increasing the Firebender's power 100 fold. The only ones left between Fire Lord Ozite and his diabolic plan to subjugate the four nations is Team Avatar. Avatar Ang must still learn to bend the elements of Earth and Fire or this world is lost forever. He has special problems with the element Earth because as an airbender he's used to look at things from a different angle or to choose a different approach to a problem. Not so earthbenders. They are direct and strong and hold their ground no matter which opponent they are facing. In this video we want to have a closer look at Avatar Ang's earthbending training by Sifu Tov, one of the most powerful earthbenders on the whole planet. But be warned, it could be very painful. <laughs> Today I would like to give you a deeper insight into earthbending and the martial arts that it is based on. Maybe you know that all bending styles in Avatar The Last Airbender are based on real martial arts. For example, airbending originated from Bagua. The elegant waterbending forms come from the flowing movements of Tai Chi. The explosive moves of firebending originate from Northern Shaolin Kung Fu. And earthbending comes from Hungar or Hong Kun, the martial arts style that I have been practicing for years now. And as a very big fan of the series, as you can see here, I want to give you today a little insight into the martial art, Hungar and also the earthbending training and I will try some of the exercises we see myself and show you the hidden knowledge we find in the series about this unique martial arts style. Let's explore it together. And one of the bending styles he had the most struggles with was earth bending because this was the first time that Avatar Ang had to have his stance properly and firmly because with water bending and also with air bending he had always like another angle to look at, another way to attack. There's no different angle, no clever solution, no chickity chick that's gonna move that rock. The spirit of the earthbenders always have the stance, always stand firmly, always have connection with the floor and this was the struggle that Ang had with. The key to earthbending is your stance. You've got to be steady and strong. Rock is a stubborn element. What Sifu Tov is telling Ang here about the horse dance is actually pretty accurate. In the language that we use, it's called Sei Pingma. So we have Yat I San Sei, which is one, two, three, four. So Sei Pingma translates to something like four foot stance. That is described how you get into the stand by moving the feet out in four get little steps. And then you have the correct measurements for performing the horse stance. Just as earthbenders, real world Hongar practitioners want to develop their routine with this stance to get connected to the earth to the ground and getting as much power for fighting then out of it. That's why this stance is part of every Hongar's curriculum. Practitioners would start with just holding the stance for one or two minutes eventually increasing up to more qigong like practices where they have to hold it for an hour or even more. This isometric strengthening exercise is known to be one of the oldest exercises from the Shaolin Temple and is really a test of your willpower because as soon as your muscles getting shaky you don't want anymore your head is going to say oh stop it but this is now where your training begins. If you resist the urge to stop the horse stand exercise then you will see that your body is capable of far more beyond what you have ever imagined. Now the actual motion of this one is pretty simple. Okay, you ready to give it a try? In the next exercise, right. they're trying to push a rock away. So obviously I cannot do this because I'm not a magician and I cannot earthbend. But the key takeaway from this exercise is far more subtle than you might think before. And by the way, don't forget to like this video if you have been enjoying so far and you maybe even learned something new. That would be awesome. I highly appreciate every like and comment because that is what helps me going. That is what you can do to help this channel grow and my mission of spreading good martial arts knowledge in the world. In the last exercise we hold the horse stance. We tested our willpower and tested if we are rooted with the earth to gain power from there. The next step is now to test this ability. And there's a very easy way how you can test your stances, especially your saping ma, your horse stance. You get into your horse stance and you grab yourself a person that is pushing directly into you. 
the goal for you is now to hold your ground, to engage the core, to activate your muscles and really root it down, having the tension in the body to redirect the force that is coming straight to you into the ground over your legs, your core and down into your heels, into the floor. As I mentioned earlier, this translates, if done correctly and properly, directly to fighting. As I have my experience with fighting as well, I have usually big, big problems to sweep or throw my instructor in our sparring sessions because his stance is so strong and he's so rooted to the ground that I need, despite that I'm 15 years younger than him, so much force to sweep him and have the perfect angle for this. If you develop this kind of stability and strong connection with the ground, then I guarantee your martial arts skills will go over the roof and you see your sparring and your fighting game well on to the next level. Thanks, Katara. A gentle nudge. I'll try that. Keep your knees high, twinkle toes! In the next exercise, we see Avatar Ang carrying a big heavy rock while Sifu Tov is trying to get him off balance. The main reason why Sifu Tov is letting Ang doing this exercise is strengthening the body. When we look at old pictures of old Hungar masters, we see that they were not like just a stick. They were big and muscled guys because already the old masters of Hungar Kung Fu knew about the improvement of health and fighting skills when having strong and big muscles. Being jacked and muscled can help to prevent injuries. It's protecting your bones from breaking, it's protecting your joints, your ligaments and your tendons from ripping apart in combat and in battle. And we don't need to talk about the intimidating effects of an opponent which is bigger and stronger than you because these psychological factors also take place in a fight, in a combat environment. So for the next exercise we're going up in the woods but I need some energy and some protein first because now we're gonna do something where we move around and carrying some big ass weights. I could just say just go to the gym and do some ass to grass squats with 150 kilos or we could go into nature and lift some heavy things that nature is providing us. And by the way, if you're interested in leveling up your fitness and your martial arts game, I have a special offer for you down in the video description. It is the first link where you will find my own strength training program that I created especially for guys like me who do martial arts and who like to lift heavy ass weights. And I will guarantee if you do this program, you will get the best results. If this interests you, then have a look at it. This thing looks about cool. Maybe warm up a little bit first. It's <laughs> about it. Okay. That would be insanely cool because I can have this on my back, but how to get it on <laughs> my back? <laughs> Okay, the thing's there, the idea stands, but how do you get it up? Do you have an idea? Ah, shit, okay, let's try. One eternity later. Okay, the trunk is up. Given the fact that I can lift this, the goal would be getting it on my back and then walk with it here around the trees. There around uh, three big ones. Going back here on this little um, track here to this place here. So I would say then let's try and lift it up. was actually lighter than I expected. And it's crazy you have to balance it out because the weight was all on one side and it constantly pulls you in that one direction. So from a training's perspective you also have like stabilization of the joints. To one side the core is engaged because you have to counterbalance the weight on top. So pretty good. See if we talk what do you mean? I'm accepted as your student. <laughs> and for the next couple of exercises, we are changing the location. So when we were already in the mountains, I thought, why not just go up there, right?
the next exercise that Toph and Ang are doing is a conditioning exercise for the fingers. And as you can see, we are thousands of kilometers away from the next desert, so we're going to do it in the snow. So the purpose of those kind of exercises is always strengthening the bone and also the skin of the bone. So you cannot actually strengthen the bones, but you can strengthen the skin of the bone. And with such exercises, you can do it. For sure, snow is not ideal. <laughs> ideal would be sand or some little stones, but as you can see, nowhere we have such things. So, so just for the sake of showing it how you can do this on your own, we're gonna do it now here. So what you want to make sure is that you go into your horse stance and then do movements like this. The important part, we need to do such exercises also when you train applications with thrusting techniques, something like snake style, which is usually something pretty direct, which goes along a straight line. So eye poke would be something like this. Then make sure that you don't have your hands like this here. Don't have them completely straight out because when you hit something hard, you can break the hands or the fingers because here you're limited. When you have like this little angle here and then you thrust like this, the hand will automatically go downwards and there you have the space of the joints that they can move in this direction. So also with this exercise here, don't do them like this, just angle them a little bit. Below the snow is actually some actual rocks. <laughs> When I did this, I felt like the pressure. So it's almost like draining this impact here on the finger. So it, it's actually more legit than it looks. <laughs> this time we're going to try something a little different. This exercise that we see now resembles something like a kettlebell swing we know nowadays. This is a really great exercise to improve your stamina, your muscle endurance, but also work on your core stability, which is one of the main factors in fighting and combat sports. The shaking that we see is again a test of the horse stance. Some martial arts call it mapu, we call it horse stance, but it's really a test if the stance is properly and firmly rooted to the ground. And also this exercise, we tried for ourselves. Let's have a look. Okay, the next exercise, we don't have a kettlebell here, obviously, but I tied here some wood together with a rope that we found earlier. And I'm gonna stand here in horse stance and do the kettlebell, like swings or kettlebell poles, whatever you wanna call it. And then we see how I can perform this and how stable it is on this one. Okay, let's try. Okay, that's that's fine, that works. Let's rise up the ante. Okay, I'm gonna do the same and now you hit me that we can simulate like the earthquake that toughed it. Okay? Okay. God's sake, that didn't hit me. <laughs> and by the way, don't forget to like this video if you have been enjoying so far and you maybe even learned something new, that would be awesome. If you now want to see how I train like Uncle Iroh in this prison workout, then you should watch this video next. And on this side here, you'll find another video that might interest you. Let's see you in the next one.